Good morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. Today I'm in early to set up my Atomic Structure 5E stations. This is the exact same station set that is in my 5E Atomic Structure bundle. I'm really excited because today is actually day three of the station set. And so what that means is today they're going to be taking their formative assessment so I can see how much they've learned from the stations. So what I want to do right now is set up all of the stations Yesterday I had labs, so I actually had to remove the stations, but now I have to set them up, so that's why I have to do it again. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and set that up, and then I'll give you all the details about what my students will be doing at each station. My students are working in some sort of learning station scenario I make sure that I lay out all of the norms and expectations and a lot of it has to do with just making sure that students can access the materials I don't want any kind of like overcrowding at the station because then the students can't engage with whatever's there and so that's kind of one of the things that we talk about is like right this is your learning opportunity for you to engage in some experiences that will help make the content a little bit more easier to understand as we go through the unit and and so I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to work through all the materials at the station so that they feel comfortable. Another thing that I do whenever my students are working through stations is I have a bunch of station signs that gives them instructions as far as like how to clean up. Sometimes there's some like model keys listed so the students know what all the particles at a station are supposed to represent. I'll give you more details about that momentarily. But one of the things that my students need to do is they need to actually answer questions that go along with each station. So besides providing the materials and the station sign, I also like my students to complete questions as they go through the station. And some of the norms that we talk about when we do this is I make sure that they understand that they are expected to answer each question in order. There are some questions that have kind of like little keys. And those keys are really important. Those are key concepts that the students need to be able to take away from the station. So typically when my students are working in the stations, once they answer all the questions, I will check in with them by saying, call me over when you are done with that station and I will check the key questions. That way I can make sure that you got the main idea from the station. Now this particular station set has a total of four stations and in this handout, there are four pages that go along with it. So I was able to fit everything on on um, each of the four pages to represent the four stations. With stations, I like to make it so that they can be completed in any order. And then each station is really just honing in on one important skill that the students need to understand. And then when we come together tomorrow, we're gonna do a foldable and I'm gonna talk with them about some of the things that they wanted to make sure that they understand besides also introducing new content as well. I think for right now, I have some grading to do. So I am going to get going on that grading, but I will check in with you during my prep period. That will be during period three so that I can show you all the different stations and all the different things that my students will be doing today. I just finished up with my honors period two class and I was able to have them finish the stations and then they also had an opportunity to take the formative assessment. I haven't finished yet looking at their results, but I thought what I could do right now is just show you what each station entails and kind of the types of things that they're gonna be asked to do and how I set up each station. Fortunately, these stations are pretty easy to set up. There's not a ton of prep associated with this or a ton of equipment that need to be set out. Um, and what's really nice is once you put the effort in to create the station, and have all the copies and things, you can take it out every single year and you'll know exactly what to do. So let me show you each station. There are a total of four of them and then I'll show you a little bit about um, you know, what the formative assessment looks like as well. This is station one where they're asked to analyze some really simple particle models. You can see I just used um, a plastic Petri dish and I created a, a bunch of particles on my Cricut and then I also created the letters on my Cricut. But th these are really nice because it's a visual representation of the different isotopes and of course there are um, questions that go along with it. I do include a key on the actual station sign and then at this station I have two setups so you can see I kind of set them up side by side side and that kind of helps with overcrowding to make sure at least a set of students can work on this side and then a set of students can also work on that side. 
This station is really simple because it's all they need is a, a device and their periodic table. So this is just an ion formation station where they'll be looking at the FET simulation, where they'll be creating different ions. And like I mentioned, there are guiding questions that go along with this. Whenever my students are working on um, like Chromebook-based stuff, I like to provide a large space for them to work at. So you can see I only have one station sign here because I want them to have the ability to work together and have their Chromebooks all set up at the same time. And then what's really nice is it, you know, just scanning the QR code takes them to the FET sim so then they know exactly what to do. This is the third station on atomic mass. And I, again, I really like this because it incorporates the use of particles. Um, what's great about these is these are essentially just gumballs. And so I tried to provide a visual representation of a sample of um, some different isotopes. And so these, this is specifically representing lithium. So I tried to have the same atom that's represented. Um, so because this station is teaching about atomic mass, I'm obviously not emphasizing um, the protons and the neutrons. Instead, I'm just focusing on the actual atoms. And so for this, they need a calculator because ultimately what they're going to do is show how to calculate the percent abundances when given a sample. And then the final station is a periodic table station where my students are just becoming familiar with like a brief introduction to the periodic table. So this is the periodic table that I copied for them on cardstock. So they'll be using the same exact one. So I try to emphasize, you know, what's represented in each square of the periodic table. And and then um, I want them to know the difference between a group and a period. And then I ask them some, like a series of questions, asking them, you know, how many groups are there? How many periods are there? What's really nice about this too is that I introduce the fact that, you know, the F block has to be transplanted into that periodic table. So it's a nice um, way to just introduce the organization of the periodic table and then give them a little bit of a preview of what's to come because that often can trip students up, especially when we're writing electron configurations. The last thing I thought I would show you is what the formative assessment looks like. So after my students complete the stations, I then give them an exit ticket. And so there are a total of 17 questions. It's a mixture of multiple choice. And then there are some like more short answer things where the students need to type in, for example, the isotope name. Um, but I give them about 15 to 20 minutes to take this. And what I can do is I can then analyze this data so that it helps guide my teaching tomorrow. So that'll give me some idea of some things that I need to focus on. Um, and then maybe if I have time, I may even bring up the formative assessment and show the students on the overhead, like here are some things to look out for. This is where some students get tripped up. But I include a series of questions that incorporate all of the things that we did, right? So for example, this is like an atomic mass example where they're create, where there's a model that's pre-created. They have to use the model to perform some calculations. So um, all in all, I think this is a really effective assessment that's gonna guide me in understanding how I can help my students tomorrow. I think for today, I'm going to leave this vlog here. Tomorrow, I'll pick back up to show you a little bit about what my lesson looks like and you know what my students will be doing during the course of the class period as we kind of wrap up our discussion of atomic structure. So at this point, we've done our phenomenaling, which was more of our engage, right? Engage students in a phenomenon. We did some of our explore stations, and then tomorrow I'm gonna to be moving into explain. So I'll talk to you tomorrow about how I am explaining some of the things that I want my students to pay attention to whenever we're talking about atomic structure. So until then, I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. As promised, I wanted to show you how I will be delivering some direct instruction to my students as we kind of review some of the information from the stations over the last three days that my students have been participating in. So I've been converting a lot of my guided notes into more foldable-based interactive type of things. And so this is an example of the foldable that I created to summarize the stations. You can see that each different station has a different part to it. So for example, there was a station just on introduction to the periodic table. And so this is, for example, the notes that go along with it. And then there was a part that was on parts of the atom, right? So I kind of simplified that and made this here. And I like these notes because it incorporates more particle diagrams. So my students can feel a little bit more comfortable with that. I also chose to teach ions as well. So that is another part. And then I have an atomic mass part. And then finally, I also have a practice part. So the plan is for me to go along with the notes with my students. I have a PowerPoint presentation that I created that my students will kind of fill it along with me. Um, but I like using the foldable because I 
like having this kind of like one-stop shopping experience. It has everything that students need. It has all the notes, all the things that they can use to review. And then I really like the fact that it has practice because one of the things that I am doing this year is I'm having my students complete the practice and then upload an image into Google Classroom. And then I'm able to provide the students feedback that way. I did take some time and analyze the data from the formative assessment yesterday. And one of the things about Google Forms is when you are looking at how your students are doing with the content, it'll tell you frequently missed questions. So the plan for Monday is to finish up the notes because I didn't quite get through everything, but I'll finish up the notes on Monday and then I'll review the formative assessment with the students to make sure that they feel comfortable. And then the last stop is we have to talk about math spec. So that'll be part of my elaborate. So I'll be looking at a little bit of math spec and how to compute um, average atomic mass from that. And then I'm going to do task cards for review. So next week will be a packed week. Um, my students will have their summative assessment scheduled for Friday. Um, and then that will be the end of the atomic structure unit. So it, it definitely went by really quick. And I think the stations and the formatives and the foldable now is really going to aid in helping the students perform as well as they possibly can on the summative assessment. So with that said, I I think I am going to get ready for my AP chemistry class. I've got two AP classes in today and we have lab today, so I have to get ready for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you know a chemistry teacher that could use some inspiration, please share this video with somebody that you know. As always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you very soon. Bye.